Today's episode is brought to you by Real Estate Radio Experts. You know, one thing all top producers have in common, if you're doing 200, 300 plus deals, they're all doing radio. And you wonder why you are not the number one person in your market. You know, you have to market the right way. With radio, we can target a specific demographic. We can write copy that converts. We reach prospects when they have intent. If you are ready to take it to the next level, go to realestateradioexperts.com, fill out the getting started sheet, and let's chat. Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go! Yeah! Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome to episode 245, 245. Man, I cannot believe uh, we've been doing this for so long. You know, you know. I'll tell you a funny story. The team over here a few days ago kind of figured out, they looked at our all of our, they wanted to figure out how many minutes have been streamed. Um, and of course, you know, we have listeners in like 160 countries, which is crazy. But, um, you know, since we've launched, literally minutes streamed, it's something like, 580 million. That's crazy. Anyhow. Um, well, I look, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, you guys have spoken uh, and you, you you like what you're hearing here. So again, I, I, we're going to keep it up as long as we have you guys listening. We're going to keep doing this. Um, and if you just found this show, I'll tell you this show is about entrepreneurship through the lens of a real estate agent. Uh, we deconstruct what top producers are doing and how they're killing it in their market. Now, today's guest, interesting guest. I brought him on for a very specific reason. This guy is building a brand new type of brokerage. Uh, this is a very, very smart guy. He ran Cobal, Coldwell Banker Global uh, for some time. Uh, he's had just phenomenal opportunities. He felt like the model, the real estate model, was broken, and uh, he wanted to do something that hasn't been done before. And here's what he's doing. He built a brokerage that focuses on luxury. Now, everybody... Many, most people will, will say, Geez, I would love to sell million dollar houses. Um, you know, I love to move upstream. I don't know how. And, and until now, there's not been a good place to go and, and learn how. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, today's guest went out and did it and they're killing it, killing it. Um, so we talk about all kinds of stuff. Now, I'll tell you that, you know, we talk about why you should always be learning. Now, you guys don't have a problem with that, right? Because you guys tune into this show and you're learning new tips, tricks, strategies, mindset. Um, we talk about why you should stay humble, um, even if you're killing. And, and I'll tell you, man, I, I'll tell you a story about humility. Um, I was, as you guys know, I was recently at recently at uh, Keller Williams family reunion and uh, you know I had a little get together and I'm sitting there and you know I got I got Russell Rhodes the 200 million dollar man to my right you know I have Nick Waldner you know that does like 400 deals to my left and we're all t- talking and this girl comes up and she listens to the show she comes up and um her name's Katie I I I'm pretty sure Katie Rocco um I I, I Hey, Katie, what's up? Anyhow, so she comes up with this guy, and this guy was at some other he, – he wasn't KW, and uh, he comes up. He kind of, kind of has a big swagger, right? He, this guy thinks he's somebody, and, uh, w- and we start chatting, and it's very apparent. Like, this guy is not humble whatsoever, and I said, you know, be me being me, I, I dig into what he's doing, and the guy's like, oh, yeah, man, you know, like, you know, I just – I did 30 deals. <laughs> I was like – I was like, last – week what do you mean did 30 deals and it just so happens like in his market in his office 30 deals he's the number one guy so this guy you know is 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 because he wasn't humble wasn't able to learn from what nick waldner's doing right next to me wasn't able to learn what russell rowe's doing so stay humble my friends uh anyhow um that's something that i need to work on so um we talk about what they are doing, like today's guest, what they are doing tech-wise to be named the most tech-advanced firm. Um, we talk about culture. We talk about hiring. 
Uh, we also talk about why alignment, finding alignment with you and your goals and your actions are so important, as well as why you need to be crazy in alignment with everybody, all your staff, every single hire you make. If you can have alignment, friction goes away. Everything moves quicker. All right. That's it. Um, if you haven't yet, go to the site. Go to the site, subscribe to the show, uh, and if you are so inclined, um, you know, leave us a rating and review on iTunes. That really helps the show. I'd, I'd, I'd personally appreciate it, and every now and again, uh, we do shout-outs to everybody who has done that, so I'd love to, I'd love to give you a shout-out. Um, lastly, uh, if you're at the site, you know, check, out, uh, check out a couple of our products. We have School of Profits. That's our, our little coaching group. Um, we don't kill you with it. It's 99 bucks a month, so check that out, and people are getting a lot out of those. Uh, group calls and uh, and if you want to if you want to start a podcast, go to Viral Cast with a K. Um, we just did a brand new explainer video that I'm pretty proud of. Um, all right, hey, let's get to it. I'm super ready. Okay. Today on the show, I got to tell you, man, uh, I'm pretty excited about today's guest. Now, I rarely, rarely have repeat guests. Today is an exception, and I'll tell you why I'm bringing this person back on. Um, if you guys go and get a coach, the quickest way to increase your production is to go upstream, right? If you're selling $250,000 houses, go to 500, 500, go to a million. Now, unfortunately, until now, um, there really hasn't been a brokerage focusing on the luxury market. Uh, so I want to, there's one brand, one guy doing this. They're making a huge splash in uh, certain specific markets. And I want to talk about that. Um, today's guest, I'm thrilled to welcome Peter Hernandez. Hey, Peter, thanks for taking the time out. Hey, thanks, Toby. It's great to be on your call as always. You have such a great show, and you know I love listening to all the great personalities you bring on and all the successful people. And God, I just think everyone should be listening to this call. So thank you. It's such an honor. It, it's amazing, man. It's amazing somebody like you would even listen. You know what I mean? I mean, it seems like a guy like you would have all the answers. But look, hold on, Peter. If people are not familiar with who you are, take a minute, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get into all the stuff you're doing. Well, let me, let me just first comment on that comment because, you know, I find it so interesting that as people get more experienced and, and they have great careers, you know, so many stop learning and stop growing, you know, and they kind of have this attitude, I know it all, or I don't need to go to this seminar because I've already heard it before. You know, Tony, as you know, I mean, I, I, I have like 46 years in this business. I got my license when I was 18 and, uh, you know, that one thing that I've never, ever, ever stopped is learning and, and learning from everyone. And, and that's what keeps me excited. You know, as you're in the business longer and longer, you know, you have to refocus yourself all the time. You have to reinvent yourself all the time. You have to stay current. You've got to stay relevant. You've got to stay in shape, enthusiastic. You know, you have to keep your mind focused and, 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 and sharp. So to me, you know, being... Um, someone that can listen to these calls. I mean, I was listening just this morning. I was listening to the, you know, David Asprey talk about the bulletproof diet. You know, how do we, how do we perform at higher levels? You know, you know, exercise, you know, learning, growing, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual. And if you're not working on these things full time, Toby, I, I mean, you're going to get lost in the dust. No, look, I 100% agree. And I think, uh, you know, I, again, I couldn't agree more. However, Again, somebody like you, I think what it takes in order to be open to new ideas um, and be able to listen to people just for that one little nugget, right, that might just shift your business two degrees, it takes a level of humility. And, and maybe maybe that's what, you know, when I made that comment earlier, Peter, maybe that's what I was alluding to. I mean, you have had such a, a, a phenomenal career um, that I think most people, if they walked in your shoes – I mean, you know, how do you be humble? A guy like you, you know, you live in Malibu, right? I mean, hold on. Let's, t t what did you used to run? What did you, let's give a sense of people, your, who you are, what your pedigree is. All right. Well, so, so basically, um, for everybody in the call, I was kind of, you know, born with the real estate spoon in my mouth, right? So my brother and my dad, um, were both in the business when I got in, I was going to UCLA at the time I was majoring in economics and I decided to get into real estate you know, as a part-time job, you know, it wasn't my goal. I was going to be an attorney. I was free law and, and that's the direction I was heading. Um, so, you know, as it goes, I got sucked in, got into real estate, you know, and quickly, you know, became pretty good at it, 
But then um, finally left my father's company um, and went to this you know, fantastic independent at the time called John Douglas Company. There um, rose really quickly to one of the top agents in the firm. At that point, that, 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 you know, I wasn't as humble probably. And I went to John Douglas and said, hey, I'd love to run your, own, your whole company. And he said, well, why don't you take an office first? And so I started managing an office. And that's kind of how I got into the management side of it. From there, I became a regional at uh, John Douglas Company. Um, and then, um, you know, my offices and everything did really, really well. And when John Douglas was sold to Cobalt Banker, I became the first manager that was ever uh, promoted directly from manager. Actually, there was a couple of us that was done. Um, but I was one of the few managers that was ever promoted directly from manager straight to president and chief operating officer for Cobalt Banker. So I did that for about you know, five years and loved it, great company and all that. But I also recognized that there was a huge opening for, you know, a different kind of firm. And I knew that the real estate mall was broken. I knew that, you know, things needed to change because of the dynamic between companies and agents, you know, the service model, you know. Um, and so at that point, you know, the idea for Telus Properties was born. And now, you know, you know, I'm one of the co-partners in Tells Properties. Um, you know, we're doing like over two and a half billion in sales, over 3,000 transactions. We just opened our 20th office. CAR named us as um, the most technology advanced firm in the marketplace in California. We also got recognized by 500 fast growth in California. You know, and we're just on this wild ride now, and I'm just having a blast. You know, here it is, and. And I'm looking at another, you know, 20 years of this. I'm so excited. And actually, I told uh, someone today, I told you today, I am more excited about being in real estate than I've ever been in my entire life. And so, you know, the enthusiasm continues on, and it and it's just super exciting. Oh, man, I see. I don't know how you. I don't know how you have this zest, right? I mean, after doing something for almost five decades, I mean, I, it's. I, we'll, we'll talk about that, but but I just want one more thing to your pedigree, right? Because you know, when I learned, uh, you know, you, I had the opportunity to sit down with you and one of your co-founders, Sharon, recently, and I learned that you ran Coldwell, you know, global, and uh, I was I was like, well, I, I couldn't believe that, right? Because how does somebody actually do that? Um, um, uh, anyhow, you shared one thing. I know we can't say names, but there there is uh, the fa there's another brokerage, right? The fastest growing brokerage around. Um, the top guy came to you and offered you all of California, and that could have been just just a, a honeypot, right? A gold mine, and uh, and you you and again, I don't know how much you can share about this, but you turned that down because because I think uh, going back to you know you felt like the model was broken. Is there anything you can share on that story, Peter? Yeah, I mean, and and, and totally, I've had like a few of those opportunities, and 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 I'm flattered, and you know, I. I appreciate it so much, and I'm sure I could have learned so much, you know, if I'd gone that direction. But at that moment in time, you know, I just really wanted to do my own thing. I really wanted to open up a firm. And I had had these opportunities, you know, um, as president of Cobalt Banker where we acquired companies, you know, to look in under the hood of other companies, see what they're doing well, see what they're not doing well, looking at what Cobalt Banker is doing well, what it's not doing well, kind of studying the industry all of these years. I kind of knew what every company did well and what they didn't do well. And going back to my agent roots, I just dug deep and said, well, you know, if I was an agent again, what would I want, you know? And, and what became really clear to me was that what I wanted didn't exist. Hmm. And so that's how I started, you know, um, with my partners, you know, developing this concept. And it was a long process. We spent, you know, years working on the, on the uh, model, but it was, it was to do, be a full service agent platform model. And I can tell you, Toby, it doesn't exist anywhere else at the level that we're doing it. I know Different companies give great service if you have great people, but it kind of all happens at the office level. It's not real scalable, you know, and as soon as you start to grow, all the systems collapse. And the thing that TELUS has done that's so great is that we're completely scalable. So if we became a nationwide firm or, you know, a 3,000 agent firm, our company would operate and function just as well as it does today because we have the systems, the technology, you know, the people in place for that to happen. And it's been built, you know, with the concept that we are going to grow because everybody wants to be in a company that's growing. Everybody wants to be on the winning team. So we realize you can't be stagnant as a firm. You have to keep growing. And so 
you know, we want to make sure that we maintain our, as we call it, our DNA. And, and I'll tell you, you know, that's, that's the one thing that's missing in real estate, right, Peter? Because, you know, you can go into any McDonald's across the globe. You, you know what that experience is going to be like, right? I mean, you know, McDonald's, Chipotle, whatever, right? Even, even a Denny's. But you go into a cold, again, we're not picking on Coldwell, but you go into a Coldwell office in uh, San Diego, and then you go literally just up the road in Irvine, Two completely different experiences. You know, the, 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 you know, even though real estate accounts for 20% of our national GDP, you know, it's extremely fragmented uh, in, in terms of, you know, no uh, standard or unified experience. Um, so is, real quick, you said, you know, if you become a global firm, if you have 3,000 agents, you know, you, you could normalize that experience. How many agents do you have right now? Right now, we have about 450 agents, okay. uh, 20 offices, um, wow. from Carmel to Coronado. As we like to say, we dominate from Coronado. I mean, from Carmel to Coronado. That's kind of our internal uh, mantra, so to speak. So, you know, we're very, uh, you know, focused right now on our growth in California. You know, we just opened an office in Palm Springs, which we're so thrilled to announce. Um, you know, we've opened three offices, as you know, down in San Diego. And so, um, you know, we're really, really excited about our growth and we have more things on the horizon. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just about become plug and play where, you know, if we have agents that say, hey, you know, we'd love you to open in our town, you know, we can quickly crunch the numbers, look at the situation. And if it works, we can be open in, in a relatively short period of time. In fact, our Palm Springs uh, office opening, nobody could believe that we opened it so quickly. So it's, it's. It's really cool. And, and you know what, what's interesting, Toby, is, and we talked about this a little bit, is, is that, you know, and humility and being willing to learn, you know, my two partners aren't from the real estate industry. I don't know if you realize that. Um, but they come from completely different businesses, and they love to challenge me on everything, you know what I mean? And we have a really great dynamic and relationship because, you know, they'll look at what the real estate industry does and they'll go, well, that's so silly. Why do you guys do that? You know? And the reason we do it is because we've been doing it for so many years right. and everyone's afraid to change. Right. And, and so that's really given us a lot of freedom here at Telus because I'm, I'm open to change. And so when these, when my partners challenge me and, and, and things like that, I'll, 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 I'll go with the challenge and I'll say like, but we need to do this to make it work. And so having me, you know, with some real estate experience and expertise, you know, and by the way, these guys, you know, in a short term learned our business in three seconds because they both have, you know, IQs of 455, <laughs> uh, you know, um, and I love being the dumbest guy in the room. I tell them that all the time, you know, that, um, you know, I, I, you know, we can, we can like, you know, shake this thing upside down and turn it on its head and, and come out with systems and processes and ideas and ways of interacting with clients. That's, it's just mind boggling. Like, let me, let me give you an example. Sharon and I, um, so, well, first of all, let me tell you who my partners are. Maybe I'll be interesting. You know, well, let's just start with Sharon. So Sharon, you know, you know, just the greatest guy in the world, like my best friend, right? And Sharon and I, you know, we're talking the other day, like two, excuse me, like the other day, a year and a half ago, two years ago, and said, you know, everyone is teaching agents how to do a listing presentation, but everyone that's teaching them how to do a listing presentation haven't been on one or haven't been on one in a really long time. So how can they teach anything? And so he and I went on a mission, and we've been on over 200 listing presentations in the last two years in the living room, shoulder to shoulder with our agents, you know, across counties, across price points, you know, studying, you know, what does the client want? What are they looking for in an agent? You know, how can we help clients achieve their goals? And we just collected tons and tons of note. You know, we prepped before the meetings. We debriefed after the meetings. And you know Sharon a little bit. And, you know, so he's clinical in his approach. And we, you know, at the end of the day, found out the 10 things that all, that all clients, you know, are interested in the living room and then how to present it and how to solve their, their, their problems in the most effective way. So that kind of, you know, dedication, that kind of research and data gathering, I think, is – 
is what makes our firm really, really unique and, and so special in the marketplace. Yeah, and 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 uh, I mean, oh, right. by the way, we won ninety four percent of those. Listings. Right, that's what I was going to say. We went on. Right, ninety four percent. That's that's insane. I mean, that doesn't. And that is the secret sauce, right? That book, that that data set that took you two years to gather, uh, is the thing that everybody wants to get their hands on. But l- l- let me switch gears. Right. A, let me switch gears a little bit, Peter, because. You know, I can look at what, you know, I, I can hear your story about John Douglas. You know, I can hear your story, what you did with, with Coldwell. You know, I can see that, uh, you know, the, 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 that, that uh, brokerage offering you, you know, this huge uh, uh, pot of California. And I can quickly put the, the, the puzzle together and go, you know what, Peter, Peter is very, very good at two things. One, hiring, right, hiring people, and two, building culture. And I have to believe that, you know, that culture, you guys are a culture first firm. Uh, you know, f- what kind of uh, advice or, you know, uh, guidance can you, people that are on this call, when they think about hiring, when they think about building culture, uh, can, can you talk to that at all, Peter? Yeah, I, I really can. And I've come a long way on this. And I give both my partners a little credit I mean, not a little credit, the whole credit for kind of changing my mind about it. And it's been so freeing, Toby. It's been so freeing. I can't tell you. The problem with the old school model of real estate brokerages is they're trying to do walkovers. They're trying to recruit everyone. They use the word retention. They want to retain everyone. And what happens is, is you start making all kinds of exceptions on people that you would normally keep or hire in your organization, which totally blows your culture. So what we've done and what we've learned is that we decided that we want to work with people that have our DNA, that share our passion for the things that we're passionate about, and that, and that we want to work with and they want to work with us. So, you know, looking at personality traits, production levels, looking at, you know, uh, you know, their, their, their open willingness to technology, looking at their open willingness to recognizing that the model is broken and wanting to be part of something different. You know, we're looking for ambition. We're looking for these certain things. And if they, people have that DNA, we don't even really have to recruit because it's, it's like, you know, a match made in heaven. You like each other and you come and you work together. But if agents aren't buying in or they don't hear your story or they don't understand what you're offering or your platform or something like that, then you've got to like start doing all kinds of other things and convincing and persuasion. Mm-hmm. And it just never works, Toby. It's like, it's like chasing, you know, whether you're a guy chasing a girl or a girl chasing a guy and trying to convince them to like you. It's just it's, – it's a waste of time. And you may have short-term benefits in relationship and they may be with you for a while, but at the end of the day, you're not happy, they're not happy. When we started the firm, we had this idea that we never wanted to drive up to the an office and see what we call that car in the parking lot, where you just go, oh my gosh, do I even want to go in there? Right. I'm going to a different office, right? And so once you realize that, and this is so key and critical, that you recruit to your DNA, you recruit to your culture, your recruiting will actually go up and your culture will get really, really strong and, and, and it'll, everybody will identify with it and it'll be definable. And the problem with most real estate brokerages is their cultures aren't definable anymore because they start making all kinds of exceptions in their, in their, uh, in their recruiting practices. Like we never use the word retention at, Col- at um, TELUS. We use the word coaching and connecting. Hmm. That's how we that's how we think about our agents and how we work with them, right? And I, and, and so sorry. and that and that's just is a totally different mindset. Yeah, for sure. And I think I think I think in a bigger picture, what what how I just digested that story, uh, Peter, is that you know you want alignment, right? You, you know, and again, alignment is so important with uh, within ourselves, right? Being in alignment with our goals and our actions. And I think if you can find people in the market who have, the, again, to use your wording, DNA, right? And, you know, with that alignment, everything, like friction goes away and everything moves faster. I, I recently heard a story, Peter, about, about search and rescue guys, right? They, they uh, um, a, a boat's sinking, you know, and the helicopter guys are flying up and there's 50 people in the water and they're like, who do we save first? 
And, you know, it's the people that are swimming towards the helicopter. Those are the people that you save because some people are going to be scurrying right. towards shore. Some people are going to be scurrying towards that sinking boat. So, you know, again, I think that uh, having or finding alignment is, is, is really important. That's interesting that you say that. Okay, so open – Well, I'm drawing a blank on – I'm actually drawing a blank on the name of the CEO for Amazon. Do you know who – Yeah, Jeff Bezos. Bezos. Would, would, it, it, would he just – tweeted that, you know, they're kind of following the Zappos model. And I chuckled to myself because it's so right on where they're actually offering people money to leave, mm. offering people money to leave, leave to find out who's aligned, you know, in their, you know, DNA and in their model. And he's really clear on his DNA. His DNA is about being a place to fail, being a place to try things, being a place to, you know, make mistakes. And, and, and so in that, you know, by saying, hey, if you don't want to, you know, here's five grand, leave, or whatever the number is. You know, I think that's just so smart because I think it was Jack Welch that said the biggest mistake he made in his business career was trying to get people to go along with the, with the program that didn't want to go along. He said it was a complete waste of time. And it, it, it's, it's funny. And, and I'm sure that you've read that book, Delivering Happiness by Tony Shea. Have you read? You, you've read that book, right? No, but I'm going to write that one down. Yeah, that's it's the Zappo book. story. Yeah. That's the uh, Delivering Happiness by Tony Shea, A Path to Profits, Passion. It's good. It's good. Um, mm-hmm. And he talks all about, you know, it's a very, very culture first thing. Um, yeah, you know, going back to that Jack Welch quote, right? I mean, you, you know, uh, I don't know if you've read Jack's book, but, you know, Jack's book, the title of it is Straight from the Gut, right? And that's how right. he made decisions. What does my gut feel about this? And uh, anyhow, okay. So look, I, we have a lot to cover. I don't want to blow. So you guys are super fast growing. You got named the most tech advanced firm in the nation or one of the most. What is that? Because everybody wants tools, and I, talk, talk to to me and the audience a little bit about uh, the the how you guys utilize tech. And I have some ideas that I want to interject, but but um, go. Okay, so I mean, there's a couple of ways to approach this, and in, in, in technology, kind of um, infiltrates every part of our business. So when I think about you know. You know, whether it's lead generation, when I think, you know, regarding providing great service to our, to our agents, whether I think about marketing, you know, whether I even think about coaching and, and, and training in the firm, technology has to play a role in it. And it has, everything has to be duplicable, it has to be scalable, and, and it has to kind of transfer and, 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 and work across all mediums and all, all different, you know, platforms. So when I think of technology for our firm is, you know, like, for example, you know, when we started this company, we said that we wanted agents to do what they do best. We knew that real estate was broken. We knew that, you know, agents were all over the place, kind of on their own. You know, if you got a, a phone and a desk and a split and E&O insurance, I mean, that was about as much as an agent could expect from their firm. Right. So we said, well, well, that's kind of crazy. Then, you know, why even work for that firm? You know, what value does that firm provide? And that's kind of the, 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 the mindset that we had going into, you know, what TELUS should look like. And so there's, there's kind of two areas, you know, that we really focus on, at least for the agent service platform. One is, you know, when an agent takes a listing, you know, what are the top 25 things that an agent does to launch a listing and how can the company do things for the agent and get it done perfectly every single time and get it done quickly. So we created listing launch hmm. and basically we launch our agents listings and that includes building websites, e-blast, social media, syndicated marketing, it includes electronic flyers, printed flyers. It includes YouTube slideshows, videos, all these different things that every agent has to do on their own. And they have to work with all these individual vendors and all these different things. You know, we systemized and, and put together for our agents where we can launch a, an agent's listings with only contract, copy, and, and um, photos in 24 to 48 hours every time they give us those three things, which is totally amazing, right? Yeah. Because most agents, it takes seven days to 14 days to get a listing launch. We had an independent company take a look at what we do 
And if an agent takes at least seven listings a year, we save them 52 days, which is amazing because that's like a two-month vacation. Right, right. And, and you see, here's why this is important to me, or, 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 and again, I, and I hope everybody listening digests this, because one of the things that I've seen, Peter, is w- one thematically, one difference between you know, these top producers doing three, four, five, 1,200 deals and somebody doing 20 is, is basically in how they started, right? And, and let me unpack this a little bit. When you just roll out and say, oh, I got my license. I'm going to sell real estate. The first thing you, you, you opt for is like, I want to find leads. Okay, leads, leads, leads. And then they try to they sell it one off. And whereas the top producers set out from day one to say, I'm going to build a business. And if you're going to build a business, they go, oh, you know what? I'm going to prepare for 100 deals. Let me build that foundation. Let me build those systems and processes, have them in place. So then when I get that listing, bloop, I put it in, you know, one, two, three, it's system, systematized, you know, it's repeatable, it's dupl- du- duplicatable, you know, and, and, uh, uh, and, and it's predictable. Um, so I think I think you know for your model I think you know that's super impressive because you're fundamentally taking what is one of the most difficult things about starting a business and you it's all right there people just go plug in and then now I just have to go do my thing and then, you know I go get a listing I give it to Shelly at at my and and it's all done and, and you know what not to talk right. about books and I, I'm taking too I'm talking too much in this episode but I, I get excited around you man but you know um, you know this is emyth right? We is we are salespeople. That's what I'm good at. I'm, I should be negotiating right. deals. I don't need to be messing right. around with all this back end, you know, minutia. No, not only should you not be doing it, you've got to find a way to get it done for you. Because if you're doing that, I have this saying that when you take a listing or you make a sale, you put yourself out of business. And everyone scratches their head when I say that. But the truth is, now you're focused on launching that listing. You're not prospecting. Or now you're focused on administrating that sale and transaction. Now you're not prospecting. See, real estate agents need to be rainmakers not raid managers. They don't water managers. I mean, right, right. You need to be a rain maker. And rain making is something that only you, Toby, or an agent can do in the marketplace. You know, everything else can be done for you if you, if, if you think about it and get it done. And that's what we decided to do as a firm because most real estate agents don't want to be managers. And if they start hiring people to do all this stuff, now they're the manager. Okay. Do you want to be Kobe Bryant or do you want to be his coach? You can't be the coach managing a team and playing like Kobe Bryant. It doesn't happen. So you just really need to decide your, your role, what you want to do, and, 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 that's how you, and that's how you get more effective in my opinion. You know, that, that reminds me of, of a, a little saying. And let me know if you've heard this one, right? What you just, that, what you just relate to me is, reminds me of this. People need to be able to say, I'm a businessman instead of, I'm in business, man. <laughs> That's right. It takes it takes. I've never heard that, but I love that. <laughs> All right. That's fantastic. All right. But I mean, but that's what was important. And that's kind of why we offer free transaction coordination. And, you know, we couldn't do that. Um, when I, when we first launched the company, I was the broker. Um, we have a fantastic broker now, so it frees me up to do other things. But when, you know, we did that and we were putting together our compliance and we were putting together our legal team or we were putting together, you know, our, you know, coverage and everything. I realized right off the bat that I wanted every file electronically. I wanted every, I wanted a paperless firm. I wanted that the, that the, uh, you know, that our transaction coordinators could handle, you know, a hundred transactions at a time and still provide really good service. And I wanted to make sure that, Um, every agent used a transaction coordinator because, again, I didn't want them managing their transactions. And two, I wanted the the files to be perfect every single time. God forbid, you know, we get into a conflict. I wanted to be able just to say, send the file, and we can just forward it to our attorneys or whatever we need to do, and it would be perfect, which is totally logical. So we decided right off the bat that the only way we could make it mandatory was was for it to be free, you know, and that service transaction coordination costs anywhere to an agent from 200 to maybe $450 a transaction. Mm-hmm. So it's a huge savings to the agent, but it was also a huge savings to the firm because, you know, we just about have zero litigation um, because 
you know, everything is managed so well. I mean, we really thought about it and created systems around it and technology around it. And we have file reviewers and we just have all of these things so that our agents, you know, don't have to be worrying about their escrow or their transaction. Are there things agents have to do? Yes. Do they have to talk to their clients? Yes. Do they? I mean, there are certain things we don't let the transaction coordinators do only because we want the agent to do certain things. But all the minutia, all the paperwork stuff, you know, we really just try to take it out of their hands. You know, from the uh, from a business perspective, and I, I, I would love to get your take on this, Peter. I mean, here's what I have found. I mean, I've 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 launched. Lots of different companies, and there's always – I'm always battling capacity. Let, let me tell you – let me share this with you. Either one, we as a team are working at capacity with no extra bandwidth, or – we are working right. We 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 have one or two uh, extra headcount staff, and and we are we have a, a bunch of bandwidth, and, but we're not at working capacity. Now, for me, I'm always trying to staff up where we are always almost. You know, we're working at let's say eighty five percent of capacity, right? Um, um, and again, you know that that's more of a bottom line management kind of perspective for me. Um, it, it seems to me like the, just the way you explain that, it seems like you might have a lot of redundancy, which is great, right? You're, you're, you're mitigating litigation, but I don't know. Is that the best thing for your bottom line? I, I, I don't know. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Well, we, we live in a really litigious uh, real estate environment, and, you know, um, I think, you know, with rising, you know, costs and, 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 and just the time taken to – resolve these conflicts, um, again, you know, really can hurt an agent's production or a company's production. So, I mean, I don't think we have redundancies as much as checks and balances. I mean, I, you know, you mentioned like, like, for example, you know, how do you function at capacity without being, you know, over capacity or under capacity? And I think that, you know, I can tell you that we're the hardest working company I've ever worked for. And I can tell you my partners and I, you know, are available 24 seven, you know, nobody takes weekends off. We're all jamming and, and, and going full speed. But I will also say that the secret to a good company is, is to have a good operator, you know, and, and having good operations. And I think we're covered in that. And so, you know, I, I just noticed that, you know, uh, we hire, you know, really great people. I mean, a third of our employees, you know, have MBAs, which is amazing, you know, like, so when you walk into one of our offices and you walk up to our uh, front desk and you think that person's just a, you know, receptionist, no, at Telus, that person's building websites, you know, they're, they're in the listing launch process and they're working, you know, with a team of, you know, of MBAs and super smart people. So, like, we have this, you know, this saying around the firm, leading with intelligence, you know what I mean? And I think it's, it's kind of grown up in this company that there's some just super, super smart people around here. And so I think everything is, is, is managed really efficiently, efficiently, Toby. But I think operations, you know, one of the toughest jobs in the world, is you, you, need, you definitely, whether you're at the agent level and you're talking about your agent team or you're at the corporate level talking about your corporation, Having a great operations uh, person is, is key and critical. You know, again, Peter, you've been around uh, uh, for a long time. You've seen the industry as it has evolved. You know, there's this big – and again, you are, as a firm, super tech-oriented. Uh, I mean, everybody has spent some time talking about the future of real estate, right? Will technology disintermediate agents? Um, and I, I mean, I'd love to get your take on, you know, if that will happen. Have you heard – well, let me answer – I won't – I won't go on. So what do you think I mean, about the future of real estate? Five, 10, 15 years, you know, will technology disintermediate uh, realtors in the current way of doing real estate? You know, I mean, you would think so. Right? And, and I probably would have thought so more five you know, to 10 years ago when technology was being introduced um, to right now. And there certainly has been a ton of money in, in experiments in trying to do that. And, you know, and there's a couple of, you know, interesting benchmarks. Um, I mean, uh, you know, the average real estate commission 20, 25 years ago, 
is the same as it is now. So there's literally been almost zero deterioration in, in, in commissions, which I think is really interesting with the, with the appreciation and the price escalation, right? So um, you got to say if customers are paying, you know, five to 6% and 7% sometimes, you know, uh, for agents to, to sell their homes, if they're paying it, they must feel there's a need for it. I mean, because people don't pay for things they don't need. That's number one. Number two, with all of the for sale by owner sites out there and all the different ways, you know, individual homeowners could market their own properties. I just read an, a, something where for sale by owners have dropped from 19%, you know, over the last, you know, 20 years to 9%. Hmm. So the for sale by owner population is actually shrinking. And I think as long as, you know, the real estate transaction um, is as complex, I mean, our files are not getting smaller. Our files are getting thicker. I mean, they're the size. They used to be, they went from a one-page document to now we're at about a phone book and a half of documents, you know, by the time it closes, not including your loan documents, which would make it a two and a half phone books. If, phone, if anybody can remember what a phone book is. Right, right. It's a thick, it's, it's a thick book. <laughs> and, and, and so, you know, when you think about, you know, when you think about the fact that it's, it, there's disclosure issues, there's, there's um, you know, negotiation issues, which I think is key and critical. We call it contract to close, where the money is made and lost in a real estate transaction. And, and there's just, you know, the ability to get top dollar for properties. You know, and the agent's value is, in my mind, maybe even gone up in terms of, and, and you know how else I know that? is because the top agents keep doing more and more. The so a good agent is business is, is, is growing more. It was so funny. I was, I was talking to this, I mean, just to talk about commissions in a little bit and, 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 and the perception of that whole thing, you know, will it go away from us? One of our top agents was talked to me the other day and they said, gosh, Peter, I've lost some deals, you know, because, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't take less than 6% and that's, you know, kind of my rate and that's just what I do. And if I don't get it, you know, um, I don't take the listing. Because, you know, I just know I have more experience. I bring more value. And that's my thing. But she said, you know, I really lost a couple of listings. And I said, you did, really. And I said, uh, well, how's your business this year? And she says, oh, it's up 30%. I said, your business is up 30%? And she says, yeah. And I said, did you take anything less than 6%? And she said, no. And I said, well, what are you worried about? Right. <laughs> it just means you didn't get those deals. It might have had nothing to do with the commission. Right. So... You know, it, it's just interesting to me when I, when, when, because I would think the same thing, but I think the complexity of the transactions, I think, you know, you know, the whole negotiation, I think the disclosures that are required nowadays, um, the fact that if you were a seller selling, you know, without a, an agent and then a buyer had an agent, could you imagine the disadvantage you'd be at? So there's just so much there. And I can just tell you, if I sold my house, own house, I would not represent myself. Really? I would pay a commission. Yeah. There's no way. Why? Because I, well, for me personally, I just know that I, I would get defensive and argumentative. Oh, right. um, <laughs> I just don't think I would have the, the, the arm's length that you really need. Um, you know, what do they say? A lawyer representing themselves has a fool as a lawyer. Right. I don't see the difference. Yeah. Right. I, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You, you know, being dispassionate about things. Well, I'll tell you. So, so I, I would, I would agree with, with your view on everything you said. I will say that I, I, I generally agree with everything you said. I think that, 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 uh, I think that, that the, the industry is at risk for innovation. Um, uh, and I, and, and let me give an example. There's a brand new company. It's a startup. They raised, they've raised some serious money, but even it's, it's a startup. And I won't go into their business model. I'm going to try to get this guy in the show. The, the, the company is called Open Door. And what this mm -hmm. company is – are you familiar with them, Peter? No, I, no, you're, no, I actually thought you were talking about someone else, so that's interesting. So go ahead. So Open Door, Open Door what they're trying to do, right, as a consumer, if you have a car – um, and there's, you know, the, the, you want to sell your car, you can easily go online, you know, find a CarMax, you know, CarMax can quickly give you uh, an offer for your car, right? Kind of on a sight unseen basis. 
Um, and they wanted to do the same thing with real estate. So they, they, they raised some money, like $30 million. Um, and they, they originally, they just launched, they launched first in Phoenix and basically, um, you know, they will, within three minutes, you input some data about your house and within three, three to five minutes, they will give you a cash offer and you can close in three days. You can get a check for your house in three days. And basically the way that they, they, they do take a fee for doing this, but when you, calc in uh, a six percent uh, 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 to to your agent right i'm gonna pay six percent no matter what to sell my house it's basically they're only paying about two percent more for this service however they're actually saving money because the, the, this open door doesn't make you do any any repairs at all, right? You don't have to, you know, swap out the carpet, fix the tile, you know, go and make sure that your irrigation, your system works. It's literally bang. And, uh, and they're making it work in Phoenix and they're, they're rolling out in different markets. So I think that kind of innovation is scary in terms of how it can change the market. However, I will say, Peter, that this is not for everybody. I mean, there's, you know, there, a millennial might be open to do this, but some, 67 year old couple who who is about ready to retire they're you know they're not going to trust some you know online company. Well, that's interesting you say that because if you've really studied the millennial toby um they are more apt to use a realtor than any generation before because even though they're completely up to date on you know market values and you know they certainly understand how to look at zillow and navigate around and figure out what a property's worth the thing about the millennials is they're extreme. They're the fastest. Um, they're acquiring wealth faster than any generation previously. They're the most educated, and interestingly, you know, they also know what they don't know. So when I hear of this this company, I think it sounds sort of like an auction company. It sounds like a buyer beware, seller beware kind of a situation. It it it, it sounds like. You know, if you want to buy something on the steps at, you know, at a foreclosure, you can do that and you can do it in one day, you know, just bring your money, but you really don't know what you're getting and you don't know what you're getting into. So, you know, I think that it's, you know, interesting that you, I think the 67 year old, there's, there's probably more worried about his bottom line, I think is the one that probably would be trying to look for a way out of a commission more so than a millennial, because I think they're, they're actually super tuned into the whole process and how complicated it is. And, and just, well, I just want to be – okay, and that's – you said some stuff about millennials I was not aware of, and I, that's interesting. But I want to be clear. This – this this they will buy your house. They, they also sell houses, but but that's a different model. But this is but a – But if they're buying your house, how do you know you're getting top dollar? You know what I mean? It just sounds like they're going to get rich – at the expense of everyone else. Yeah, well, I, I you know, again, uh, again, I don't, I Masters, don't. but I don't know anything about okay. it. So I mean, I have to study their models. So, yep. but, but I, you know what, I, and I don't even truly know if the real estate market in Arizona has got as many disclosures and 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 um, you know, uh, hoops we have to jump through here in California to actually change title, to transfer money, to to become a homeowner that. Um, you know, it may be different there, but I, I don't think so. Okay. And I, don't, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to take any, any spotlight off you. All right. Hey, we got to start wrapping up anyway. Okay. So, so, so listen, Peter, I always ask for a book recommendation. Here's the setup. I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? Oh my gosh. Let me think about that. I am in, well, um, but you've got your license already. Yeah, so I'm not gonna. Yeah, I got my. Yeah, I'm. Yep, yeah, I have my license. I'm. I'm in real estate. I, you know, I don't think the answer. I mean, books are. You know, I read a ton. Um, you know, I even set reading goals for myself, so I'm constantly reading. But um, the answer, other than the past your test, is not in a book. I mean, there's obviously great books we can read on technology and great books we can read on leadership and great books we can read. Um, oh, I, I got one. I think I, I, in my mind, I think, you know, those old classics like think and grow rich by Napoleon Hill, Yeah. you know, to me, um, that, or, you know, um, uh, what was that one book? Uh, Ogmandino, you know, right. I mean, the greatest the salesman in the world. Things. Yes. Yes. Things. I mean, those are the kind of books you need as a, as, an, as, a, as a beginning agent to create disciplines within yourself to become wealthy and to work in a way that'll truly, truly get you ahead in life. But 
you know, as a brand new agent, you know, I think, you know, being a mentee, you know, getting on a team where you're getting great mentoring and great, you know, uh, coaching and support is, is really the fastest way. And if you're not willing to do that, the next best way is, if, is as you get leads and, and, and you're competing for listings, bring in a top producer to share it with you. So you can be shoulder to shoulder with that person. And a couple of great things happen when you do that. One is your name gets side by side with somebody that's super experienced, so it elevates you immediately. Two is you're going to have a much higher chance of getting that listing. And, and getting half a listing is way better than, than, than losing out to a top agent. And three is you're going to be hearing this person. You're going to be learning things through through just being shoulder to shoulder with this person. So um, I really like the idea of, A, as you're a new agent starting off, um, bringing people in on your deals so that you can learn from them or being a, a team member. That is the fastest way. I mean, there's kind of no manuals on selling real estate, but there are great, you know, but there are great books like, you know, Think and Grow Rich and, and The Greatest Salesman in the World um, where you can get insights into, you know, how to think and how to be motivated and things like that. Yeah. It, it's, it's a self-motivated business, you know, and, and, and I, you know, you know, I think we talked about this on the last show. I mean, I'm super disciplined about getting up every single morning and I call it putting my armor on, you know, and there's affirmations and spiritual readings and exercise and, you know, and, and just certain, you know, health things I do, you know, to get myself ready for each single day. And, and, and this is, this business, you know, it's going to, it's going to challenge you. It's going to challenge you mentally and physically. And, and you got to just really be, um, super prepared in, in emotionally, mentally, physically, all those different areas of your life to be able to really excel. And so, you know, things like that, I think, um, you know, it's a between the ears game, Toby, as you know, as much as, as anything else. And, and, and so just self-management, self-discipline, I think are so key. And I want to talk about that because you, you just intuitively, Peter rolled into one of my last questions. So I, I, but I, I want to go back for a second because you just, you just, look, everybody, I get, I'm sure just like you, Peter, I get emails every week with people going, Hey, Toby, you know, I love what you're doing. Can't, will you be my mentor? I can't, right. I'm too, I'm way too busy. doing. I can't mentor anybody. Um, it, right. but, but people always ask me, well, how do I get a mentor? And I commonly ask that to my guests, but what you just, what, what you just did, Peter was brilliant. I've never heard anyone outline a plan like that. And, and again, if anybody missed it, go back. But basically you said, bring people in on your deals, right? So I go, I, I hustle, I'm door knocking, I'm doing whatever. I get a listing appointment. Then I bring a P and I don't even know if you would, you know, how many people that you or Sharon in your firm would go out and do a listing presentation anymore. But, you know, I, I find a top person in the firm. Ask them to join me and basically take over, be the lead guy, um, and I'm learning and being being uh, mentored along the way. That's brilliant. Well, and it's so it's so obvious, but you know everyone is, and especially you know difficult, you know when you're starting off and you need the money to think about sharing something with somebody. But you have to realize this, Toby, that if you're working with a buyer, there's usually no issue because. If they like you and trust you and they think you're going to work really hard for them, they'll go, they'll go with you. But when you're competing for a listing, the seller has a completely different mindset. They usually interview three to four agents. You know, they're taking a look at their track records. They're getting referrals. They're looking online at Zillow to see, you know, what kind of referrals are there. You know, they're, they're, they're approaching the selection of an agent much more critically. So... What's interesting is you made a, co a comment. Let me just let me just clarify something. Most, believe it or not, most of the time when we go on listing presentations with our agents, Sharon and I, it's with our top agents. Okay, mm -hmm. and when we have, if it was a newer agent, or even if it was an agent that was competing against a really top agent in another firm. We would almost, without a doubt, not only go with them, but we would probably very strongly suggest they bring in another agent so that they have that, like you call pedigree, you know, that, that experience. Because, you know, even if we're with a less experienced agent, you know, unless Sharon and I are personally going to help and work the deal, which we don't, you know, because we don't sell, they're still going to say, okay, this is a great meeting. We love you. We love the company. But now we're working with X agent compared to Y agent. Right. Right. Yeah. So 
this is the key. And, and so putting a team together, you know, with you and what we, what we do as a firm, Toby, is like if, if a new agent were to say, by the way, we don't hire new agents, but let's just say this is for a trophy listing. This is when this would occur in our firm. We would say, okay, that trophy listing is in this icon agent's farm. We should bring this agent in to work with you on this because they're going to be also talking to these two agents. And unless you just have it in the bag, there's a good chance you're going to lose it. Got it. So you guys, again, this goes back to your, 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 your data driven approach, right? You can look at the farm, go, Hey, I know who the, who, you know, who the big boy or girl is in that market. You better bring in our big boy or girl, or, uh, it's going to go, it's going to go away. Um, that's right. You want to, you want to eliminate any possible objection and you want to compete at a higher level or at least at the same level. So, okay. So again, switching gears and mixing this up a little bit, I'm trying to use our t- remaining time as efficiently as possible. Um, early on, right, that person getting a, uh, have it going on a listing appointment, giving away part of their deal, you said it might be hard, right? And then earlier, just before that, you said this is a mental game just as much as it is anything else. So you have to, if I'm going to get, if I'm a newer agent, I might need that, the, the, the commission there, uh, you know, I need to not be in scarcity mindset, but abundance mindset. You, Correct. How do you, I know that you have a morning ritual. I want to know about that, but how do you consistently, Peter, place yourself or enhance that, that, uh, that winning or abundance mindset that you have today? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's from experience. One thing, you know, it, I have found that if you put in the effort and you work really hard, um, you know, the deals you think you're getting, you may not get. And then there's deals that you didn't even know were coming that you're going to get. Right. And so you get this, you, you got to get this in your psyche. One of the disciplines about that, um, Tony is, is when you lose a deal, Tony. you know, don't, don't lament on it more than, you know, if you can, like two hours, just get over it quickly. And right. when you win a deal, don't do what everybody does and just go, you know, okay, I got that. I should have gotten that. And don't give it, you know, celebrate your wins and forget your losses, which is the opposite of what people do. What people do is they, they lament their losses forever. And when they get a, when they get a deal, that's really great. It's like they should have, right. it's really weird, but you've got to understand the psychology on that. So you want to celebrate your wins for Second thing is that, um, you have to, you know, be prospecting at a level and working at a level where you can afford to lose things and walk away. You have to have walk away power. Right. So like, it was so funny. I was talking to this agent today and he was saying, you know, God, I lost 10 deals and I, and I, and I, and I, and I don't know what happened, but I lost two, 10 in a row until we were talking about it. And then he says, Oh, by the way, I've got six in escrow and six more going in, you know, this week. So, you know, it's like, Next. It's always next. And when you think about it, think of it this way, Toby. I just lost a deal. Next. I just got a deal. Next. So you want to keep yourself emotionally even. And that's the big discipline there. Keep yourself emotionally even. If you're going to celebrate or you're going to put some emotion to it, put your emotion into your wins. I, I agree. I think I think the only thing that I uh, that I personally would add to that is you know doing what you and Sharon did early on when you're putting together this 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 uh, book of it, it, you have to debrief yourself w- 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 that deal I lost it emotionally next but l- let me step back dis- dispassionately and say what did I do did I do something differently to lose that deal than I did for that last one that I won. And the same thing with, I won this deal. What did I do? And I think that, and this goes back to process. If you have a rock solid process and you follow that every single time, well then, then, you know, then it was, you were meant to win or lose that deal. Um, But if you, if you, if you don't have a rock solid process, there may be something very, very small and minor that you're doing that causes uh, uh, those those intermittent wins and losses. Completely agree, and and you've got to go back and look at it. And you can even call the client. I am totally okay with this. Hey, I know you listed with Bobby Sue. Tell me what you liked about her and why you didn't go with me. Right. You know that's that's a great question, and I think it's it's nothing wrong with that. I'm just talking about the emotional side. Right. Of it. Absolutely. You know, uh, agents go down for weeks. 
You know what I mean? And I talk to agents and they'll come in and they'll say, I would have had a great year if I had lost these 12 deals and they want to take you through all 12 again. Ugh. And it, it's like, you've got to be able to, it, to cut emotionally. But as far as analyzing it and looking at the data and keeping data and improving your ability and skills, and that goes to rehearsing and role playing. Can I tell you, Toby, people do not rehearse and role play enough. They're practicing on their clients. And, and there's so many agents out there that will role play with you and they'll rehearse with you and they'll practice with you. And you just have to do it over and over and over again until you become, you know, just a great actor. Because when they look you in the eye and they say, well, you take 5%, you can't look like a deer in the headlight when they right. ask that question. You know it's coming. So be ready for it. So my point is that, that you know, we don't practice and rehearse enough. And we need to do that a lot more. I want I one hundred percent agree with that. And I think and I'll tell you, Peter, this is my opinion. You know, I'm in the middle of a great book called The Power of Habit by by Charles Duhigg, and you know, he, he, I just recently read a story about Michael Phelps, the swimmer, and how he was able to amass seven gold medals or whatever. Is the last swim that he did, the everything went wrong. The water got in his goggles, whatever. But he had. Every night his coach made him mentally go through every single piece of, of how to, to compete. And, all, and, and, and every single race, at the beginning of the race, his coach would say, put in the tape. And when everything went wrong, he just reverted back to his training, right? The, the, he just visualized everything, every stroke, like every movement, and just became automatic. So I, I – and I guess the point that I'm trying to make, Peter, is you know, rehearsing or role-playing, you, know, you can do it in your head. Like, and I, I do, I'm in the shower, and I'm role-playing stuff. You know, I'm consistently right. doing that. Um, <clears throat> so anyhow. Sorry, well, man. I think it's just like when you have, you know, like it's, 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 it's rethink everything, come at things from different angles, try to put yourself in the, in the client, you put yourself in your client's shoes. You know what I mean? You just said that. How would you feel about that? If you were listening to you say that, you know, and just put thought and practice and rehearse these things so that when you're back in that situation, you might just do it slightly differently and win the listing instead of lose it. Right. I, I, I completely agree. And if you're not looking backwards, you know, how are you going to grow? It's impossible. So, so what is, what does your morning, your morning routine look like? How do you put that, that uh, you, you said suit of armor or uh, something to that effect? How, how do you prepare in the morning? What does your morning look like? Let me just ask that. Okay. So, you know, basically my morning goes from like five to seven thirty. And I get up at, at 5 a.m. And, and folks on this call, you know, I'm sorry, but if you're sleeping in to 8, you've already lost because people have been up for three hours already on yeah, you. Yeah. And if you really look at top people and top producers in this world, um, they all get up early. And there's something very, very magical about the early morning hours. It's almost like you have the energy to yourself. And, and, and so I get up that hour every early. I have a, a chair. I, first thing I do is I go to my, uh, I have coffee that's already ready for me. I make a bulletproof coffee. I then go sit in my chair and I start off doing some spiritual readings. I then do affirmations. I then journal. I then go into my uh, day planner and, and I just review everything that's going on, on for the day. Um, I then, um, after I do that, I, um, I, go, I journaled, I go into my day planner, I, 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 I go through my emails really quick, look at them, see what came over, over the night before, and then I'm usually out the door by 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. for a CrossFit workout, and I work out like six, six to seven days a week. Wow. Um, and I go, and I just go work out as hard as I can, and then when I'm done with that, I make sure that I have a super healthy breakfast that, that, that you know, I try to eat for performance. And then after that, you know, I'm ready to go. You know what I mean? I'm, all, I'm fired up. And I start every day like that. And, you know, I mean, I might get interrupted. You know, Carrie, my wife, could say, hey, will you do this or will you do that? Or, you know, can you drive, you know, Faith to school? But I always find a way. I'm, I'm 96%. You know what I mean? Just yeah. because I always I try to find out in advance and I work around it. I'll get up earlier or do whatever I need to do. You know what I mean? To make it happen. Instead of going to do CrossFit, I'll work out at home. You know what I mean? I'll just make it happen. So it's just a mindset. And then what that, and then what that does for me is, is I'm emotionally, spiritually, mentally ready to go. And then every night I review the day. I write a gratitude list for the day. I kind of look at what I did right, what I did wrong, what I could do better at. 
and then I read a minimum of 10 to 20 pages every night, you know, so that I can power through books. Because if you read 10 to 20 pages every, every night, you're getting through, you know, 300 to 600 pages a month. And if you're reading consistently like that, you're going to power through some books. How do you, how do you, um, how, let me, let me, let me my morning routine is a, it's similar. It's not the same, but it's similar. But, but with me, I'm so, I'm so habitual. I'm so, I do the same movements at the same times every morning. And, and if there's this, well, it's going to make me sound like a lunatic, but, but, but I, I don't, dude, if something interrupts that routine, like, it kind of has a ripple effect throughout my day. And I can get pretty grouchy pretty quickly early on. And, and even, this is what's going to make me sound like a lunatic, Peter, is there are certain things I don't want to think about. I shouldn't have to. And my wife is, it will, will, this drives her nuts and she this will start, she'll start yelling at me at six in the morning. You know, when I pour my coffee, I want to open up the fridge door and the half and half needs, I want it on this, in the, I don't care where it's at in the fridge, but I want it in the same place because I don't want to have to, I'm right, I'm role playing, I'm thinking about my day. I don't want to have to put thought into, right, looking for that, for that, for that half and half. How do you, and, and again, does that make me sound like a lunatic beer? No, 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 no. I absolutely agree. And, in, 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 you know, I laugh and you'll love this, Toby. Someone went asked me, well, what makes the ideal real estate agent? And I said, well, you got to be ADD. You got to be compulsive. You got to be overly competitive. You got to be a little paranoid. You've got to be, you know, a little insecure and you got to have a big ego. <laughs> right? And that was my definition of a perfect realtor. And, I, and it's not meant to offend anybody, but I bet you if you look at yourself, you've got some of those traits. And, and, and so anytime my routine gets out of whack, you know, it, I get like crazy too, like that compulsive behavior kind of person that if he doesn't walk the same way, I totally understand what you mean. So I think it's, there's good things to habit and discipline, but I, you know, I also like just went on a vacation on spring break and I realized I had to give up my bulletproof coffees right, and right. my workouts and, and everything. And I had to mentally, you know, adjust. Yeah. I think that's good practice too once in a while. Absolutely. And I think, and, and look, and, and, and again, we'll end, we'll end this here, but, but that's, that's uh, th- th- being able to adapt is critically important. You ha- in your business and in life, if you are not able to adapt to outside economic climate or influences, you're going to die. So all these, all these routines and habits that we have are great, but I think being able to adapt, being able to adjust, just like you said, is critically important uh, to your future survival. So, so anyhow, hey man, look, yeah. um, I know, I know that uh, you know with what you were building, something special out there at Telus. Um, for the few people that that I know that are aware of you, like everybody wants a piece of this. Everybody wants to be a part of of what you're doing. Everybody wants that book. That uh, you know, they everybody wants that ninety four percent closing rate. Um, I and again, I know you hire like two out of ten applicants, but. Uh, where can people find you? I'm sure people are listening to this and go, hey, man, I want to work with a guy like, like Peter and Sharon. Uh, where can people find you, Peter? Okay, well, my email is peter.hernandez at telusproperties.com. Peter.hernandez at telusproperties.com, and that's T E L E S. And, Toby, I, I just, you know, I feel like this was a conversation just between you and me. I forget sometimes if people are listening to this call, and I, I'm just as, I'm ready to just, like rock it out of here. And I'm so motivated and excited to get going. So you're just as motivating, man. I just love it that you even, you know, thought to have me. Okay, no problem. And by the way, dude, I might edit out your phone. If I release that with your phone number, you might have to get a new phone. I mean, I, that could destroy your phone, man. So I, okay. I, take the phone <laughs> out then, would you? Yeah. I'll make a note of that. Take phone out. Um, okay. okay. Um, Okay, yeah, and then look, I would just say, you, you know, everybody, if you do email Peter, maybe tell him that you heard, uh, you know, you heard it on the show, and that might be a little extra incentive for him to actually, uh, you know, hop on the phone with you or, 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 you know, talk with you. So, hey, Peter, thanks, man. I appreciate it. It's always fun to chat with you, and um, let's keep in touch. You got it. Thanks, right. Toby. See you, buddy. This show is produced by me, Toby Salgado, with help from our research team and production done by Viralcast. If you're building a team and want to make sure you're doing it the most efficient way, reach out to Corker and Coaching. They coach 83 of the nation's top producing teams. And for our listeners, they'll give you a free business evaluation. Send an email to Bubba 
at corcorancoaching.com and let them know I told them told you guys to call.